Community Viewpoint. And welcome back once again to Community Viewpoint. I'm John Pollock, your host for this segment, just like it was for the first segment. And it's two in a row, folks. I'm still here. I didn't go back to where I came from last week. So once again, I'd like to thank uh, Sally Kerr from the Chamber for filling in. Uh, you did a wonderful job, Sally. And uh, uh, before we get into our first uh, guest, uh, coming up next week, we're going, we'll, we'll be talking about uh, other things too. But there's a First Responders Appreciation Day that's coming up Saturday, September 19th, uh, from 10 a.m. until 2 p.m. at the Prump Senior Center, which is, where is it at? 1370 West Basin. It, the flyer, as it says, uh, join this, the Prump Senior Center in thanking our local first responders, the Sheriff's Department, Fire Rescue, Emergency Services, Search and Rescue, Mercy and Animal Control for all they do each day to protect us and our town. We, meaning they, will be serving hot dogs and our famous award-winning chili, free to all first responders and their immediate family, which means spouses and children. Public is invited. And the tickets are $5 for adults, $3 for children, 10 and under. So come by and meet the brave people who protect us and give them a handshake and a thank you. So that's going to be sad Saturday, September 19th, from 10 a.m. to 2 p.m. And Anne wrote down that there will be drawing prizes. If any businesses or citizens would like to donate a gift to be given to the responders, you can contact Anne over at the uh, Senior Center at 775-727-5008. And all responders will receive a free ticket for the drawing without a charge. So once again, First Responders Appreciation Day, September 19th. We're taping this on September 11th, so we all know what that means. The flags are at half mass today. So enough said on that. So our guest today is Tanya Brum, mm -hmm. is it? from the Inspiration Senior Center. Senior and Living. Senior Living. Yes. Senior Living. I don't want to say the center, Senior <laughs> Living. Uh, I've taken to a, a tour there. Mm -hmm. I've eaten there. Mm -hmm. And uh, you've sent me an invitation to live there, but I'm not ready I yet. He is, but that's okay. So this, here's Tanya here. Let's let her <laughs> yes. I'm not ready yet. <laughs> People keep saying that, and then I have them moving in younger and younger, yes. so because it's such a neat environment. It is. It's a beautiful, beautiful yeah. place. Easy access. You have mm -hmm. a small bus. Yes. And yeah, you have the, the, the grade school next to you. We're by um, J.G. Johnson, Johnson, yes. yes which is wonderful because the kids used to come over and read to our seniors last school season. So I'm, we'll be working with them again to see if we can get that. Good, I was going to mention that. Yeah. yeah. So that, that's it's a great so interaction. Cool. Yes. Yeah, it is. Seniors loved it as much as the kids. Because I remember Lisa Simpson going to the senior center talk, reading to her grandpa over there. Yeah, there you go. Yes. And it's, it's wonderful experience for the children. Um, a lot of them don't have grandparents and great grandparents in their neighborhood. And for our seniors, they don't necessarily have their grandchildren around. So they kind of get to be surrogate grandparents and mm -hmm. surrogate grandchildren. So it, it's a very mutually happy environment. Mm -hmm. So, yeah, so that's over. What's the address? It, okay, now this is where it gets confusing. Right. Because it's it is actually, now that it's on the Google Maps, it's 931 South Honeysuckle. Or excuse me, West Honeysuckle. Okay. And because it was on Java Street, they had one block was Java. That's mm -hmm. all it was in with our building. Oh. And they realized that this is getting too confusing for people. So it's just the end of Honeysuckle, but it's really west. It's from Prom Valley. It's all the way west to the end of and Honeysuckle. And you have the sign right on Prom Valley Boulevard yes. also. Which yeah. has really been a help. And you have little so, footprints going there on the street. That no. too. <laughs> <laughs> no, breadcrumbs. <laughs> breadcrumbs, yes. So and it helps. Yeah, so you're going to talk to us today about other things? Well, right, what this time of year, uh, all of the insurance companies and Medicare is getting ready to go into the Social Security and the Medicare signing up. Uh, it's October, November, or I think it's October through to the beginning of December. And one of the things that I realized is that 
people are really not aware of the amount of benefits they have mm -hmm. or the variety of benefits. So this past Thursday, we had a workshop with Sandy Haldeman, Sandy Jennings, and Amy Rosner, and it was on Medicare 101. This week on the 17th of September, uh, which is a Thursday at 10.30 in the morning, we have a panel coming in, and the panel, and I'm gonna take my glasses off so I can don't get anybody's name wrong. The panel consists of uh, Barbara Duckett, who is the Public Affairs Specialist for Social Security. Anybody got any questions on Social Security? Barbara's got the answers. Um, ba Barbette uh, is gonna be there from, Barbette Bowers is there from uh, Senior Dimensions. And again, she's not there selling Senior Dimensions, she's there talking about Medicare. And Sandy Jennings from SHIP, almost all of you know Sandy. Yeah, she runs uh, after me. She was running after me when it was time for my Medicare to get you. To get you ready. Oh, so yeah. she's got a fountain of information. And Amy Rosner, she's with the Senior Medicare Patrol. So all of these people are a fountain of information. They're here specifically to help our senior residents. Or if you're pre-senior, you're going to be a senior sooner or later, so get the information now. Yeah, yeah. If you live all, long enough, you'll be a the, senior. <laughs> yes, all things as they should be, you'll be there. Um, but I'm very excited because this last um, session, uh, Medicare 101, had a great turnout, but not everybody who could be there could get there, so that's why I'm doing it uh, two times. Okay panels, so it'll be a lot of questions and answers, and I really hope people come out to, so that they learn. Again, it's 1030 on Thursday the 17th at Inspirations, and it's in the activities room because they need enough room for all the people uh, to come out. We do a lot of these uh, different seminars at Inspirations and workshops because it's a way of sharing information with the community, and it's free to the public, so you kind of can't go wrong. But that's just one of the things we have going on. And the other thing we have going on that I think is really cool yes. is we're do we've since July, since the, we're doing church services on Sunday afternoon at 2. Mm -hmm. And it, initially the concept was so that we would be able to provide church services for our residents. Mm -hmm. And it worked well, but we found out that a lot of the churches are bringing their their own parishioners with them are coming too. So we, it's open to the public. So if you don't feel like getting up at 9, 10, 11 o'clock to go to church service in the morning, come to ours at 2 o'clock in the afternoon. And it's in the living room. You've been to the living room. You know how yes, beautiful it is. Yes, it is, yes. Always, and we have a different pastor every week. Mm -hmm. This Sunday is Ron Fairbairn from Central Baptist. Mm -hmm. Um, the following week is John Biggs. So we have somebody different each week, and it's wonderful that all of these pastors got together and they stagger their schedules. Mm -hmm. So we always have a church service, and I'm just thrilled. We finished our first quarter. We're finishing our first quarter today, you know, this That's the end of this month. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So it's kind of cool. So I'll look in the future and see if, uh, which uh, church I want to go see. Oh, I, I like the way he preaches yeah, or she preaches. Yeah, exactly. And, and that's sort of the choices. It's and very what it unique. Does, it's, it is, and I'm really pleased with the way it's been received by the residents. Mm -hmm. I went to the residents and asked them, do you want to do it this way or do you want just one minister? And now having been two months into it, they prefer having the changing ministers ministers and pastors, and they're, they're genuinely enjoying it. And you get a different, you have the same spirit with a different message and with right. a different delivery, and it's, so it's really been kind of fun for them. Right. I know Patty and I go out to Shoshone. There's a Catholic church out there. Mm -hmm. I know there's one in town, but the yeah. St. John the Baptist, the, mm -hmm. there's something about the area. It's the, not, you throw religion and spirituality both in the same yeah. spot, and it just it just hits home. That's where I belong out there. Mm -hmm. So yeah, I, I, you're, and we have a, the uh, the pastor that comes out from Lone Pine. It's a long. Drive. That's a long drive. Yes, he comes out the first and third uh, Sundays mm -hmm. of the month, and uh, four o'clock on Sundays <laughs> at St. John the Baptist out there. But it, it's yeah. a beautiful place, and you you get the, your point across with. Uh, yeah. The, the big one up there. It, yes. it, it makes a difference, <coughs> um, and you want to join those two uh, concepts of religion and spirituality. Mm -hmm. 
and that it's much more comfortable. Mm -hmm. and, I, and ironically, we're dealing with a huge variety of churches, all, probably seven, eight different mm -hmm. religious per persuasions that come out, but you still feel the love from them and the fact that they're giving up their time to do this. I mean, none of these people have to do this, but they were so excited about becoming involved. So, and I get them calling me back and said, well, when's my next turn? So, you know, uh, so, yeah. So they're interested any time, yeah. So it's really wonderful. It's a wonderful program. Mm -hmm. so. So, so that's great. The inspiration's senior what? Senior living. Senior living. Yes. But uh, you have a lot of other things for the, you have the, the little bus, and you can take the, the folks to the, uh, their uh, local uh, medical uh, mm -hmm. uh, appointments? Yep, the transportation is, the scheduled transportation is twice a week. It's Tuesday and Thursday. Okay. But if a, a resident has a doctor's appointment on Monday, Wednesday, and Friday, the bus takes them to, the, the, uh, to their appointment. It has the lift on the back so that anybody in a wheelchair can go on the lift so that they don't have to worry about it. It's big enough and wide enough to uh, put the walkers in when they are going to the doctor's office the driver or whoever's with them takes them in and brings them back up and okay. gets them on the bus and with that we're out of time thank you there's a lot of information yeah. and before I forget there's a special event happening next Saturday let's have Mary Duff uh, talk to you about that that she's coming up right now thank you I'm the co-chair of the nuclear waste and environmental advisory committee and we will be holding the town cleanup September 19th from 8.30 to 11.30 a.m. And this is something that we've been doing for about a decade now. And we're just trying to fit it in now so that it is beautiful for the fall festival for when all the tourists come out. All right, and what exactly is the Pahrump Town Cleanup? So the Pahrump Town Cleanup will utilize volunteers, and so far we have several youth organizations who have volunteered their help, and we're still looking for more volunteers. We'll have four focus areas, Simpkins Park, Petrick Park, Homestead and Gamebird, and then Lakeside area have been identified as the focus areas, so we can make them look a little more beautiful. All right, and who is sponsoring this event? So, so far we've had a couple different organizations um, do donate. We have Prump Valley Disposal dropping off dumpsters, and we'll also be collecting the shopping carts, and so they'll be using their truck. And then we have the hospital, Desert View Hospital, and uh, Valley Electric donating water. And then BLM has donated some trash bags. And how can other people donate to this event? Well, we're still looking for some gloves and some water for the event. And so you can contact me at 775-727-9970, extension 237, for donations and volunteers. Is there some place they can drop off their donations? Yes, at Night Communities Coalition. And where is that? It's at 1020 East Wilson Road, behind Walmart. And can people donate their time to help out with this event? Yeah, definitely. We're still needing volunteers. And where can they volunteer at? We will be gathering September 19th, 8.30 at the Petrick Park. But if you give me a call beforehand, I can give you further instructions. And again, my number is 775-727-9970, extension 237.